to Wine and Words Wednesday. I am Amy Moskovitz. I'm the Reference Manager at the Haverford Township Free Library, and you're here with us on Wine and Words Wednesday. So I hope that you are enjoying your favorite beverage this afternoon, and you can sit back and relax and join us for a time of... This afternoon's poetry readings are all about love to get us ready for Valentine's Day this weekend. Now, as we know, love comes in many forms, so there's tons and tons of poetry out there all about all of the different types of love, and I'm going to be sharing with you some of my favorites. The first one is entitled, I Love You, by Ella Wheeler Wilcox. I love your lips when they're wet with wine and red with a wild desire. I love your eyes when the love light lies lit with a passionate fire. I love your arms when the warm white flesh touches mine in a fond embrace. I love your hair when the strands enmesh your kisses against my face. Not for me the cold calm kiss of a virgin's bloodless love. Not for me the saint's white bliss, nor the heart of a spotless dove. But give me the love that so freely gives and laughs at the whole world's blame. With your body so young and warm in my arms, it sets my poor heart aflame. So kiss me sweet with your warm wet mouth, still fragrant with ruby wine, and say with a fervor born of the South that your body and soul are mine. Clasp me close with your warm young arms while the pale stars shine above, and we'll live our whole young lives away in the joys of a living love. That was I Love You by Ella Wheeler Wilcox. Just the first of our poetry this afternoon, all about love, to get ready for Valentine's Day weekend. The next one is a famous love poem. It's Sonnet 65 by William Shakespeare. Since brass nor stone nor earth nor boundless sea. Since brass nor stone nor earth nor boundless sea, but sad mortality nor sway their power, how with this rage shall beauty hold a plea whose action is no stronger than a flower? Oh, how shall summer honey breath hold out against the wrackful siege of battering days, when rocks impregnable are not so stout, nor gates of steel so strong, but time decays? Oh, fearful meditation, where alack shall time's best jewel from time's chest lie hid, or what strong hand can hold his swift foot back? or whose spoil of beauty can forbid. O oh, none, unless this miracle have might, that in black ink my love may still shine bright. That is Sonnet 65 by William Shakespeare, one of the greatest writers about love of all time. Now moving forward, few hundred years. This is Bird Understander by Craig Arnold. I think you'll like this one. I like this one a lot. Of many reasons I love you, here is one. The way you write me from the gate at the airport, so I can tell you everything will be all right. So you can tell me there is a bird trapped in the terminal, all the people ignoring it, because they do not know what to do with it except to leave it alone until it scares itself to death. It makes you terribly sad. You wish you could take the bird outside and set it free, or, failing that, call a bird understander to come help the bird. All you can do is notice the bird and feel for the bird, and write to tell me how language feels and possibly useless. But you are wrong. You are a bird understander, better than I could ever be, who make such a many noises and call them song. These are your own words, your way of noticing and saying plainly 
of not turning away from hurt. You have offered them to me. I am only giving them back. If only I could show you how very useless they are not. That was Bird Understander by Craig Arnold. I think that's so sweet. I hope you liked it as well. The next poem comes to us by Rita Dove, and it's called Flirtation. After all, there's no need to say anything at first. An orange peeled and quartered flares like a tulip on a Wedgwood plate. Anything can happen. Outside the sun has rolled up her rugs and night strewn salt across the sky. My heart is humming a tune I haven't heard in years. Quiet's cool flesh, let's sniff and eat it. There are ways to make of the moment a topiary, so the pleasures in walking through. My favorite part of that poem is the pictures that she creates in our minds about how night strewn salt across the sky from the stars. I like that. I hope you do too. The next poem is Christina Rossetti. I loved you first, but afterwards your love. I loved you first, but afterwards your love, outsoaring mine, sang such a loftier song as drowned the friendly coolings of my dove, as drowned the friendly coolings of my dove, which owes the other most. My love was long, and yours one moment seemed to wax more strong. I loved and guessed at you. You construed me, and loved me for what might or might not be. Nay, ways and measures do us both a wrong. For verily love knows not mine or thine. With separate I and thou, free love has done. For one is both, and both are one in love. Rich love knows not of thine that is not mine. Both have the strength and both the length thereof. Both of us of the love which makes us one. That is Christina Rossetti. I loved you first, but afterwards your love. And sometimes we have poetry about love gone wrong or the lack of love, such as Anna Swore's I'll Open the Window. Our embrace lasted too long. We loved right down to the bone. I hear the bones grind. I see our two skeletons. Now I am waiting till you leave, till the clatter of your shoes is heard no more. Now, silence. Tonight I am going to sleep alone, in the bedclothes of purity. Aloneness is the first hygienic measure. Aloneness will enlarge the walls of the room. I will open the window, and the large frosty air will enter, healthy as tragedy. Human thoughts will enter, and human concerns, misfortune of others, saintliness of others. They will converse softly and sternly. Do not come any more. I am an animal very rarely. Next is Neutral Tones by Thomas Hardy. We stood by a pond that winter day, and the sun was white as though chidden of God and a few leaves lay on the starving sod. They had fallen from an ash and were gray. Your eyes on me were as eyes that rove over tedious riddles of years ago, and some words played between us to and fro, on which lost the more by our love. The smile on your mouth was the deadest thing, alive enough to have strength to die and a grin of bitterness swept thereby like an ominous bird a wing. 
Since then keen lessons that love deceives and rings with wrong have shaped to me your face and the God-cursed sun and a tree and a pond edged with grayish leaves. That was Neutral Tones by Thomas Hardy. Now for something a little different. <laughs> Let's bring the tone back up. This is Video Blues by Mary Jo Salter. My husband has a crush on Myrna Loy and likes to rent her movies for a treat. It makes some evenings harder to enjoy. The list of actresses who might employ him as their slaves is too long to repeat. My husband has a crush on Myrna Loy. Carol Lombard, Paulette Goddard, Coy, Jean Arthur with that voice as dry as wheat. It makes some evenings harder to enjoy. Does he confess all this just to annoy a loyal spouse? I know I can't compete. My husband has a crush on Myrna Loy. And can't a woman have her dream boats? Boy, I wouldn't say my life is incomplete, but some evenings I could certainly enjoy. Two hours with Cary Grant as my own toy. I guess, though, we were destined not to meet. My husband has a crush on Myrna Loy, which makes some evenings harder to enjoy. Let's have fun poem called Video Blues by Mary Jo Salter. Next is The Quiet World by Jeffrey McDaniel. In an effort to get people to look into each other's eyes more and also to appease the mutes, the government has decided to allot each person exactly 167 words per day. When the phone rings, I put it to my ear without saying hello. In the restaurant, I point at chicken noodle soup. I am adjusting well to the new way. Late at night, I call my long distance lover. Proudly say, I only used 59 today. I saved the rest for you. When she doesn't respond, I know she used up all her words. So I slowly whisper, Thirty-two and a third times. After that, we just sit on the line and listen to each other breathe. That's a nice one. That reminds me of the book Vox, if you're familiar with that. <laughs> and if not, look it up. You'll find out why. Next is a familiar one, maybe to some of you. It's How Do I Love Thee, Sonnet 43 by Elizabeth Barrett Browning. How do I love thee? Let me count the ways. I love thee to the depths and breadth and height my soul can reach when feeling out of sight. For the ends of being an ideal grace, I love thee to the level of every day's most quiet need by sun and candlelight. I love thee freely as men strive for right. I love thee purely as they turn from praise. I love thee with the passion put to use in my old griefs and with the ch my childhood's faith. I love thee with the love I seem to lose with my lost saints. I love thee with the breath, smiles, tears of all my life and, if God choose, I shall but love thee better after death. How Do I Love Thee by Elizabeth Barrett Browning. E. E. Cummings wrote, I carry your heart with me. I carry it in my heart. I carry your heart with me. I carry it in my heart. I am never without it. Anywhere I go, you go, my dear. And whatever is done by only me is your doing, my darling. I fear no fate, for you are my fate, my sweet. I want no world, 
for beautiful you are my world, my true. And it's you are whatever a moon has always meant, and whatever a sun will always sing is you. Here is the deepest secret nobody knows. Here is the root of the root and the bud of the bud, and the sky of the sky of a tree called life which grows higher than a soul can hope or mind can hide. And this is the wonder that's keeping the stars apart. I carry your heart. I carry it in my heart. And Maya Angelou wrote, Come and be my baby. The highway is full of big cars going nowhere fast, and folks is smoking anything that'll burn. Some people wrap their lives around a cocktail glass, and you sit wondering where you're going to turn. I got it. Come and be my baby. Some prophets say the world is going to end tomorrow, but others say we've got a week or two. The paper is full of every kind of blooming horror, and you sit wondering what you're going to do. I got it. Come and be my baby. As we wrap up today, I have but a couple more. The next one is by Margaret Atwood, and it's called Variations on the Word Love. This is a word we use to plug holes with. It's the right size for those warm blankets in speech and for those red heart-shaped vacancies on the page that look nothing like real hearts. Add lace and you can sell it. We insert it also in the one empty space on the printed form that comes with no instructions. There are whole magazines with not much in them but the word love. You can rub it all over your body and you can cook with it too. How do we know it isn't what goes on all the cool debaucheries of slugs under damp pieces of cardboard? As for the weed seedlings nosing their tough snouts up among the lettuces, they shout it. Love, love, seeing the soldiers raising their glittering knives in salute. Then there's the two of us. This word is far too short for us. It has only four letters too sparse to fill those deep, bare, bare vacuums between the stars that press on us with their deafness. It's not love we don't wish to fall onto, but that fear. This word is not enough, but it will have to do. It's a single vowel in this metallic silence, a mouth that says, oh, again and again in wonder and pain, a breath, a finger grip on a cliffside. You can hold on or let go. And last but not least, Lord Byron, She Walks in Beauty. She walks in beauty like the night of cloudless climes and starry skies, and all that's best of dark and bright meet in aspects and her eyes. Thus mellowed to that tender light which heaven to gaudy day denies. One shade the more, one ray the less, had half impaired the nameless grace, which waves in every raven tress, or softly lightens o'er her face. Where thoughts serenely sweet express, how pure, how dear their dwelling place. And on that cheek and o'er that brow, so soft, so calm, yet eloquent. The smiles that win, the tints that glow, but tell of days and goodness spent. A mind at peace with all below, a heart whose love is innocent. Thank you so much for joining me today and for listening to our poems of love. I hope you have a wonderful Valentine's Day and a wonderful President's Day weekend. Thank you so much for joining us for Wine and Words. We'll see you next month.